7.51 the time. Nine out of every ten people across the UK have access to the internet. It dominates our lives at work, home and even in between. But it wasn't always like that. Today marks 25 years since the World Wide Web was invented by the scientist Sir Tim Berners-Lee. Bill Turnbull went to meet him at the Science Museum for a look at how it all began. It's a quarter of a century old with almost a billion websites. This is the BBC homepage from the mid-1990s. We now use the World Wide Web for socialising, shopping and spying. Three quarters of adults here in the UK use the web every day, but there are still four million homes that aren't online here. And around the world, four billion people who can't get connected. So Tim, good to meet you. Thanks very much. That was one of the things on the mind of the web's creator. They came back and made a model of it. We met in front of a Pegasus computer, similar to the one his parents worked on when he was a boy. So Tim, thanks very much for joining us on Breakfast. When you first made the web 25 years ago, did you have any idea, any concept that it would become what it has? Obviously no, no idea at all. The idea, it was really important that the web should be able to have anything on it, but the idea of that, it would end up with almost everything on it, it was uh, certainly, no, it, it was, <coughs> what it seemed like a crazy idea at the time. But on its 25th birthday, the web is playing on Sir Tim's mind. Governments or businesses are trying to control it, and it's being used for eavesdropping on a massive scale. The web itself should be something you and I can use to communicate and just feel that you and I are communicating without either somebody stopping us, somebody blocking us, or the feeling that we know somebody's looking over our shoulder. So the people of the world have to be constantly looking out for it and constantly making sure through action, protest, that it doesn't happen. Are we going to continue on the road and just allow the governments to do more and more and more control, more and more surveillance, or are we going to set up a bunch of values. Are we going to set up something like a Magna Carta for the World Wide Web and to say, actually, now it's so important, so much part of our lives, that it becomes on a level with human rights. When you see how much is being used these days for, say, uh, pornography, sometimes abused by, by child abusers, for instance, that must bother you. Yes, of course. And when, when, when you look at the web, in a way, the web, can, it's humanity connected. When you, look at, when you look at the web, you see humanity. Humanity involves the wonderful and it, it involves the ghastly. The, you see both. I don't have a lot of sympathy with people who say, you know, there's so much rubbish on the web. Well, you know, if there's so much rubbish, then <clears throat> if it's rubbish, then don't go read it. Go read something else. Regardless of its pitfalls, though, it's hard to imagine life without the World Wide Web. But to Tim told me, it might have been called something completely different. Sort of all kinds of names for it. Something like Mine of Information, uh, Moi, or The Information Mine, which was Tim. Both were a little bit too egocentric. Tim. Tim would have been Tim. Uh, it tough, the, what, how, what did that stand for? For t The Information Mine. The Information Mine. The idea of a mine of information was appealing. So World Wide Web, global, is, uh, was something important. Web, mathematically, web is a mesh. They give the impression that you can c connect anything to anything. And www sort of uh, didn't exactly trip off the tongue, <laughs> particularly no. for a lot of people in other countries. Dubuve, 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 was people complained about. But on the other hand, I'd reserved the letter W in a way I had to myself. And the www was certainly an acronym nobody else had used. It just trips right off the tongue. <laughs> so Tim, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.